Hey guys, good evening everyone. It's November 14th, 2019 and it's been a long while since the last time I had a live session here in our Facebook page. But um, I would like to welcome everyone and feel free to drop a comment, say hi, or let me know the stocks you'd like me to review for tonight. Okay, so I tried my... I tried doing live um, insights in faith in our YouTube channel, but it's been I've been getting technical uh, issues, so I'm back here. Go ahead and uh, say hello. But uh, right now, what you can see on your on the screen is our uh, investigrams. This is what I use when I review stocks and. Uh, we're using the Bollinger Band. Do you see the three lines here? That's our Bollinger Band, and below is our uh, RSI. And these are the only two indicators that I use when I review uh, the stocks. Okay, so go ahead, drop a comment, and uh, let's see who is going to be the first that will be reviewing. Hello, Michael. Good evening. Insights for DMCI, uh, DMC ISM now, and Meg, okay. All right, got that. Uh, DMC ISM, okay. Let's check out DMC. Okay. So for DMC, we are currently at, well, the selling pressure is really high, but, I think look at this we're having some uh, possible signs of uh, reversal soon while the stock price is going down your RSI now is slowly gaining momentum it's moving in an upward direction and uh, if you are to plot the possible area of support this is the area that um, we need to watch out for. Okay, so if you want to get in, um, wait till uh, around 7.61 level and see if the market gives us a chance or a bounce at that area. I think this is just trying to stabilize and confirm the support before it uh, moves in the uh, moves upward. Okay, let's see the earnings. The earnings look. Promising Q3 earnings really is uh, is good, and I think um, we'll be experiencing that bounce that we have been waiting for for the MC ISM. Let me just put this in our notepad so we won't forget the MC ISM. Okay, ISM. <clears throat> ISM is currently just doing a flat line movement here, uh, sideways movement. And uh, this is the support that I'd like us to uh, monitor. See that? It is also creating a support at this level and uh, confirmed that support in this area as well. Let's see the health of our RSI. Also uh, moving in an upward direction. So guys, in a lot of occasions, you will notice RSI giving us a slowly a bullish divergence, meaning it's slowly moving upward. But it doesn't mean that overnight the bounce that we have been expecting will happen. It sometimes takes a while. It will still move on a sideways direction first before it goes up. So similar to this uh, pattern, it's actually trying to uh, create that very, very minimal movement here. So if I am to plot a our Darvis box, our Darvis box, and if you want to be uh, safe, you can just plot it this way there. So it's creating that sideways movement. Now, if it breaks out of this Darvis box, then we can say that it will now create a brand new wave to the upside. But if you want to be very conservative with all your actions, you want to wait and uh, probably enter at the support level, 
and if um, there's a price breakdown then you can cut your losses make sure to establish around three to five percent which is ideal don't wait for it to uh, go any lower than that otherwise you will be uh, an investor overnight meaning if uh, the decline or the negative goes three to five percent it's going to be harder to cut loss and then all you have to do is just wait wait for it to go back again and now the element of time is the i mean time is a, a very important element there um chances are you'll be uh, just stuck there waiting for a long time before you can go break even or before you can gain profit okay so this for instance um, you enter at this level and then you were not able to cut your losses three to five percent below that then look what happens next it's been almost a year right uh, actually not no one September and it's already November and uh, you will not be able to cut loss because it's already a big amount in terms of uh, negative right this is already approximately 14 to 15 percent decline from your total investment so that's the beauty of the stop loss or cut loss uh-huh wow good evening everyone sorry i was not able to uh, greet the others okay don good evening so ism now uh, Meg and uh, Don is for FLI Mark. Good evening, DPI. Yes, I'll uh, review that for you. Jen, good evening. Ali, Bloom for uh, Mervin. Bloom, SecB, Wilcon. Okay, let's review that as well. And for Jose, FB, Tech, PIP. And uh, JFC. Okay, so uh, we have a good amount of stocks to review. Let's check out now. For now. <clears throat> All right. It's also positive. And, and they think this stock is just wanting to rest because it's been on an upward movement uh, for almost a month. Now, if uh, You'd like us to review or um, so I'm plotting the next support at this level three pesos area spotted at three pesos area so that's the next support that I am seeing uh, the reason why I said that is because we are now moving below the uh, <clears throat> MA20 line and when the stock price is at that level your MA20 line can uh, act as a resistance right so uh, try to observe the past three days each time it touches the uh, MA20 line you will experience we've experienced some price rejection and uh, today it is a red and uh, I would have to say that uh, in case this goes down further, the area to watch out for would be three passes area. And let us see if we'll have a green candlestick or an engulfing green candlestick that would confirm a bounce. But definitely, this is the next area we want to watch out for. Meg. Meg is currently doing sideways. Okay, so hopefully, so this stock is still undecided whether to go down some more or uh, this is just trying to stabilize at this level, somehow creating a support at that level because it's really just doing sideways. But um, another thing to uh, consider when you have a very constricted Bollinger Band, um, chances are it will erupt, right? See four ninety. No, not four ninety. Okay, just at that level, four pesos and eighty. So normally, if we have something like that, it will just erupt and then make a a um, 
you know, massive movement one day just to uh, see if, uh, let's see if it will go in an upward direction or it will experience some price breakdown. Okay, but definitely this is the area that we have as a support for pesos and 80 cents. Let's check out the revenue. Revenue is still uh, looking healthy, right, at 11.48% um, uh, increase in their net income. I'm looking for an, a perfect example of a constricted Bollinger Band. It's very, very slim. Um, let's see this. This is the perfect example. Constricted, just doing sideways movement. Very, very minimal movement. And then all of a sudden, one day there's big volume and then price erupted uh, to the upside. Okay, so that's a perfect example. This one as well. Price getting constricted here, right? We're doing sideways and all of a sudden there's massive movement to the upside. Next, uh, Meg, oh, we already have that, FLI, let's see FLI, okay, another constricted Bollinger Band, and it is creating a support at the level where it is at right now, respecting uh, your ME20 line. Used to be a resistance over here, and then one day it did a price breakout, and it now created a support and trying to stabilize at the uh, area where it is at right now. So this ME20 line is now your support. So check if, um, if you want to get in. Overall, my um, outlook here is still you're at a very cheap level because at one point it reached the two pesos area. So you're still uh, at a reasonable price. Your hmm, net income, they got a negative 6%, but not that much. Okay, they also give dividends. Interesting. Okay. So that's your FLI. DPI. DPI, okay. So just be uh, extra careful, hopefully, because this, these two areas used to be a resistance. So I'm thinking the price level where, where it is at right now is going to create, it will create a um, support. It will try to stabilize first in this area. Hopefully it does. Um, before it continues to go up. Now, if we experience a price breakdown, then that's a different story. It will, if it goes lower than this, then of course this will now act as a resistance. So, those are your conditions. Most of the action should happen to the upside before we can say, okay, it will create a uh, support at this level. Ali. For Ali, Ali is looking healthy. You know why? Um, look at this. Uh, back in November 12th, price stopped at this level. It ended outside of the Bollinger Band. And so we mentioned before, for us to say that it is not going to move up, it has to engulf this candle. So also, um, today's candlestick ended um, higher than uh, the red candlestick back in November 12, so that would mean we will potentially experience some more price um, movement to the upside or more bullish movements in the coming days. But, but if you really want to get in and um, be conservative, I would say 46.37 uh, area would be a good entry price. The reason why I said that is because some people may have entered here and will take profit and it will give us a chance at this area before it continues to go up. But anywhere from the current price to this price, it's still, uh, for me, it is still a healthy level. Okay, and they also have a, a scheduled dividend uh, release. 
on the 29th of uh, November. Bloom. Bloom has just experienced a, uh, it's triggering the upper band, All right? So that's looking healthy. Now, um, if I'm to check the next from where it is at right now, let's screen upwards. Where is the next possible resistance? Okay, let me plot that here. 11.59. 11.59. Let me just create that. Oops. Okay, so this is the next resistance because this used to be a support over here, right? Resistance, resistance over here, and there's another one here. So that's the reason why I wanted us to observe this uh, key area and see if we will experience some price or weakness, signs of weakness at that level. If you do experience that, then that would mean, um, you know, probably take partially, uh, partially take profit uh, at that level and then use your buy buying power uh, to buy some more shares when it lands uh, probably at the uh, MA20 level, okay? So again, if you may, if you have entered at this level, this could be a good area to uh, take profit. If you see some signs of weakness, take note. If you see some signs of weakness, because sometimes you also have what we call a breakout play. The price continues to go up. Okay. How's everyone so far? Hello, Marco. Let's add IDC for you. Hi, Don. All right, I'm glad to be of uh, help. I uh, hope I was able to answer your question. Hi, Joe, DMC. Uh, I already um, I already reviewed DMC. That's actually the first talk. And the, let's see if um, I, I'll revisit that for you, okay? Bloom, sec B. Sec B. Okay, so let us see. Look at this. So I would have to say that this is the bounce that we have been waiting for. This previous candlestick ended outside of the Bollinger Band, but in today's candlestick, it is higher. Look, look at that. So I would have to say we might experience some more movements to the upside in the coming days. But if you want to really get in, uh, this is the support that I am seeing, 192.95. Okay, so that is the support that I'm seeing. But um, yeah, just observe the market and see um, which area you can get in. But for me, this is the safest. But if it continues to go up, then just find uh, your entry price. Okay, but um, any moment or no. Um, in the coming days, my outlook here is that this will give us some more green candlesticks. Wilcon. For Wilcon, oh, nice move. It's moving to the upside. Although we are now at the overbought area, but sometimes it can stay uh, and linger in that area for um, several days or even months, right? But overall, look at Wilcon moving in an upward direction. Um, the business has been looking so healthy and attractive for the past, what, 17, 18, for the past two years. The sentiment is really moving on the upside from a 6 pesos area to an 18 pesos. So this is really good for Rukan, all right? Um, just uh, my recommendation actually is for Rukan to be part of your long-term investments. Now, if I'm to plot the next support for Wil or Wilkin is going to be at the 17.40 level. Uh, here, 17.40. The reason why I said that is, um, you know, people will take profit. It's not forever that it will go up, 
a stock has to rest to um, you know that's healthier if a stock rests so that when it, it declines it's not going to be very steep okay so if you want to get in wait for it to stabilize because it will have something like this the movement could either look like this stabilize create a support do some sideways movement here before it continues to go up okay so that is the next support that I am seeing. FB. Let me just charge my laptop. It's about to die. Set B doing some sideways movement. Okay, let us see. I know I mean set B, not set B. FB. FB is he okay, has check this out. How is FB doing? Doing sideways movement. They also have um Dividend play, November 18 is the X date. Okay, so if you want to get in, 90 pesos. 90 pesos will be an entry, a good entry price. 90.15 to be exact. Okay, so that is the support that I'm seeing. Overall, I would highly recommend to invest in FB. Okay. But if you also would like to trade it, go ahead and trade it. But um, given the fundamentals of this company, uh, this is a solid company. It's San Miguel, All right? So uh, think of uh, think of it as a long term uh, use or invest in this stock um, in long term because there's really a big potential uh, for your uh, investments to grow. Secondly, they regularly give out dividends. Okay, look at that. So that's my take. You're still at a very healthy level, cheap level for uh, FB tech. Tech, um, the selling pressure is still there, but look at that. Well, the price is moving downwards here. The RSI is looking healthy, healthier. Okay, so let us see. Where can we enter? Actually, the uh, at the price where it is at right now, that's the support area. This is it. It's still at its support. Now, you have 146. Sometimes, um, that's the, you know that's a downside in a Philippine market. The volume is really really low. That's why uh, movements in our stocks are also very minimal, right? So while the price was moving downwards here, it's already giving us a, an upward movement. So while the others are not showing interest in here, and if you're, you know, you're not very uh, particular with uh, gaining profit right away, get in at, at this point, wait for some time, it could take weeks, it could take months, but definitely the beauty is you already have a position at the lowest level so that when people show interest in this stock, you're already in, right? Uh, PIP. PIP, be extra careful. It's triggering the lower Bollinger Band, so it might give us some more downward movements. Okay, although, um, in some locations, when uh, the decline is very significant, um, chances are it will also give us uh, some bounce, right? When uh, it gives us a, a very massive decline. However, just to be safe, because uh, you're still at, you know, you're still outside the Bollinger Band, that means you're not yet uh, out of the woods yet. You're not out of the woods. 
So if I am to plot the next possible support, that would be right here, okay? At the uh, 1.40 level or 1.31 level. I would have, my, my take on this is that I, do, I would wait for a green candlestick, an engulfing candlestick before uh, I enter. Okay, so I'm thinking it will continue to go down, uh, but if we still maintain this kind of look where it, it's going, uh, it's RSI is moving in an upward direction, then uh, that will mean uh, we will be facing a possible bounce anytime soon. And I'm thinking it will not be really too deep. If it will uh, go further downwards, it will not be that low anymore before we experience the bounce. All right. Hi, Jonah. Jonah is my colleague in the office. SSI, let's add that. And this one is for Ray, Mervin, SLI. Sure, let's do that. Um, KPPI for Richard. And hmm, Ayla, Ayla, JFC, okay. All right, we'll do that. PIP. Next will be JFC, very timely. Okay, I also have JFC, guys, and I know, I know, there's a, a steep decline today. We're already at the oversold area, but uh, I would, I'm sure many of us here are uh, invested in JFC, okay, meaning, uh, I would assume many of you are in it as a long-term invest uh, as a long-term investor. So I have a different outlook. I'm not scared whenever JFC goes down because that is our opportunity to buy some more shares. Um, just want to share today. I no, actually not today. Yesterday, I got. Uh, I was able to enter around two hundred fifteen. But today it went down. I was unable to watch the market. And as you all know, for those of you guys who are new here, um, my profile is really more on long-term investing. And we talk about the Philippine market because I work in the morning. So I just uh, enter and then stay in it long-term. So JFC, just for the record, I'm in JFC as a long-term investor. So, um, if it, whenever I have money during paydays, and I just add. So this is our good. As this is a good opportunity. It is down at the moment, and uh, but looking at the technicals, right? Uh, price was moving downwards. Price is moving downwards, but your RSI is already moving in an upward direction. Okay. So my take here is, if you really want to take advantage of the sale price. Okay, uh, I'd like to treat Jollibee right now as uh, stock on sale. I'd wait for a, confirm, a confirmation, a possible confirmation of a bounce before uh, I add some more shares. Okay, because this might continue to go down, I can never tell. So if it continues to go down, uh, I'd wait for it to go and uh, create a support first before it continues, before I enter again. So that's what I will do. But let's check out the weekly chart here. So we have a clearer picture on where the post next possible support is. Okay, so yeah, we see it right away. This is the next possible support, 189, if it does not give us a good bounce tomorrow. Okay, the reason for that is Look at this. Price stops at this level uh, several times. And there is also a resistance that happened here. So if it will go down, it will go down and test the 188 pesos le um, level. Okay, so we are now on a weekly chart. So there you have it. That's JFC. IDC. For IDC, mm -hmm. we're seeing some signs of weakness for IDC. Wow, 
November 15 was November 15 is the X date. Okay, so those people who are in IDC and let us say you want to get out by tomorrow because it's already November um, 15. So let's say you know, when the market opens later and if you want to get out, you're already qualified to get this incentive from IDC, 35%. I think this is a very attractive uh, dividend uh, share or what, whatever you call that, 35%. Okay, so uh, I'm thinking um, normally that's what happens during the X date. Uh, price will uh, retrace, but we don't really know uh, if it's going to be a massive downward trend or the massive downward direction tomorrow. Uh, but let's just see if it gives us a good bounce at the 6.75 area where you have the MA29. Okay, there you have it because it might test this before it gives us a good bounce. Okay. SSI. For SSI, this is giving us some signs of weakness. See that? It was uh, on a bullish movement for three days. But right now, the price has ended inside the Bollinger Band, engulfing the previous uh, green candlestick, meaning price is much lower, right? So it might revisit your MA20 area before um, it gives us a good bounce. MA20 area. There you have it. Okay. Overall, your Q3 earnings for SSI is looking okay, and there's also net foreign buying. So, yeah. If you believe in, um, of course, um, that's your assignment, guys. Make sure to always read the fundamentals of the company you are engaging in so that you know you won't feel stressed whenever the price goes down right like uh, for me for instance i don't really mind uh, jfc is on a decline um, because i'm in it as a long-term investor because i believe in the fundamentals and the future plans of uh, the company right sli Oh, nice bounce here. Okay, so this is the support we're seeing, 2.43. But overall, I'd say that uh, this stock has experienced a bounce. So nice here. You know, you're, those people who have entered around this area, good for you. This is nearly overbought, and then right away there was a bounce. So i um, thinking it will give us some more green candlesticks for this stock. But if some people will take profit and they will give you a, a chance at the 2.43 area, that is the, the desired uh, entry price. And that's because we are seeing a support uh, being established at that level. KPPI. Okay, so I was able to, I wonder when did I create this? But this used to be the support. And then, I mean, I forgot what I said about this, but I created this as a support. Probably this is another support, and it gave us a good bounce. Now, let's see. Let's build up this. Um, probably the next possible support is here, because this used to be a resistance, used to be a resistance, and then there was a price breakout, and normally when it does that, when uh, you have a breakout play, it will revisit that before it continues to go up. Okay, so this is again the new support that we are seeing 2.87 to 2.90 area. Because remember, it's always an area. It can be slightly higher or slightly lower. All right. Uh, Urban just came back from trading. What's a good stock to cover? Um, oh, so my recommendation is first check the fundamentals of the company you'd like to engage in. That, that way you can trim down or shortlist uh, the stocks 
and then from there check the technicals all right so if you do not uh, know how to read uh, you know the, the, the charts if you're not using any um, indicators yet uh, maybe you can also use uh, Bollinger Band and RSI and you can just you know request for for these stocks to be reviewed because eventually you know if we continue doing this on a regular basis it becomes a muscle memory for us at a glance in less than a minute you can right away tell uh, the movement or the possible direction that the stock can take so it's a work in progress for all of us so thank you for joining me uh, sometimes I'm not very consistent but I try my best to really do live every every day right so if I don't if I'm not able to do live every day uh, what I would normally do is I record and then I upload and uh, that's how we create that daily rigor for review stocks we check charts right now I have a simple request for everyone if this is your way of also supporting um, our channel uh, please do subscribe to Miss JT this is the name of my YouTube channel, Miss JD. Uh, please subscribe. I also upload videos there. And uh, that way, if you want to play back the recordings, you can also visit uh, YouTube. And what's good about YouTube is that when you do playback, watch your video. For example, we do this, review this now, then tomorrow, when the market closes, I would normally go back to my to my live recordings, and then I review it just to check whether my insights are correct, and that validates, uh, you know, our inference or our analysis. If they're correct, then I replicate that in my trades. So that's how you can also do it. You can um, check it out. So we are Miss JD. So uh, please do subscribe, and um, I want our channel and our page to be engaging. So expect some more, you know, giveaways, especially because we're nearing the holiday season. I'm thinking of some ways we can make this uh, community a more engaged and lively, right? So feel free to make recommendations, guys. Uh, name again, ma'am, your channel. We are Miss JD. There you have it. Uh, that's the, the name of our channel. And uh, you can also make suggestions. If you're in um, the U.S., you're also trading the U.S. market, let me know. Uh, I can probably have another session, another live insights focused on the U.S. market. Uh, you know, we are a work in progress in terms of having these uh, daily rigor, okay? Do you have any questions, guys? Just any question you think uh, that will help you develop your skill in trading or investing? All right. So in the meantime, I think that's it. Um, for those of you who have subscribed to our channel the other day we did um, we had a draw of our winners for our 10 power banks just watch the video in YouTube uh, to find out and uh, for those who won please send me uh, a direct message send me your address so we can ship your power bank I'll do that over the weekend okay guys thank you and, and good night Thank you. Okay. Okay, Paul, well, thank you. I'm in California now. Our name again, ma'am, of your channel. So, uh, as you can see, it's um, Miss JD. That's the channel that I have. All right, guys, thank you very much. Good night. Bye bye.